Would you like to know how to automate monotonous and repetitive web-based tasks? If so, you are in the right place. Hello, I'm Marcelo and in today's tutorial we will learn how to automate common web-based actions with WebPath. So we'll get started by learning how to open the browser and do the login on the web page. And then after doing the login, navigate on the browser to another page from where we will do web scraping so we'll extract data from this page and then also we'll learn how to take a screenshot to a web page and also then how to close the browser. So that's basically it, so let's get started right away. So let's get started by opening WiPath Studio and by the way, if you don't have it, you can find here on the top a link to a tutorial from where you can learn how to download and install WiPath Studio on your PC. So now from here, let's create a new process and let's call it Web Automation. And let's click here on Create. So now first step will be to open the browser on this login page. So then we can learn how to automate the login here. So you can find the link on the resources of this tutorial. So to open a browser or application or to use a browser or application, we have to use the use application browser activity. So let's drag it to our uh, workflow. And first we have to indicate the application to automate. So first make sure you have the browser opened here on this login page and then click here on indicate application to automate. And now here we can see that says cannot communicate with the browser. That's because WebPath extension is not installed on the browser. So we must have WebPath extension installed so WebPath can interact and communicate with the browser. So to install extension, let's just do here a click. And now automatically it asks to install or enable the WebPath extension. So let's click here on install. And now because the browser still is running, uh, let's force the close. So extension was installed. So now let's open the browser. And now we have to make sure that we turn on the extension. So extension is enabled. So now let's just open the browser again on the login page and indicate again here the application. And now it worked fine. So now if we close the browser and run our bot, we can see that it was open the browser and then close it. So let's just disable the close part for now. So to avoid here the close of the browser by this user application browser, here on the close property, let's set to never. So now if we run again, we'll see that when the bot ends execution, the browser still is open. So now next step, let's learn how to automate here the login. So we have to fill the username, password and click on the login button. The credentials are here on the text. So this is the username and this is the password. So to fill a text on input fields, we'll use the type into activity. And so first let's decay the username field. Let's now confirm here. And now let's provide here the name inside double quotes. And now let's drag another type into this time for the password. And now let's just get uh, the password. And now here, let's just paste it here. And now let's just test to see how it's working. So let's just close the browser and run our bot. And you can see that was open the browser and then was fill the username and the passwords. So now we just have to make the bot to click on the login button to do the login. So to click on the button, we'll use the click activity. So let's drag it after filling the password. So let's indicate the button. Let's confirm. And now let's test. So I will just close the browser again 
and RenderBot. And here we can see that login was done successfully. So now next step after doing login, the idea is to navigate to this page. And from here, we will extract uh, data. So we'll extract the title and price of each listed book across some pages. So five pages, for example, so it doesn't take too long the extraction. So to navigate from this page to this one, uh, we will use uh, an action, an activity for that, which is the go to URL, which allows to navigate on a browser to a specific URL. So let's drag here the go to URL action. And now here, let's uh, open the little quotes and paste the URL for uh, this page and you can find the URL on the description of this tutorial. So let's see if it's working. So let's just run. And we can see that after the login was navigated on the browser to this page. So it's working fine. So now to extract here the data from each book, We'll use here the table extraction feature here on the top. So let's click here on table extraction. And now we have to select the data to extract. So let's get started by the book title. So to set up the extraction for the title of each listed book, let's indicate the title of the first book. And now here, uh, let's indicate what we want to extract, the text or the URL. So let's indicate the text. And automatically we can see that WebPath is detecting uh, the text, the title of fish listed book on this page. So let's just confirm here and let's just change the column to title. And now let's uh, indicate the prices to extract. So let's click here again and now indicate the price. And we can see that it's being extracted the price of each book. So here let's just change the column name to price and let's confirm. So now uh, we want to extract data across some pages. So to set up that, we have to enable here the extract data from multiple pages. And now we have to indicate the button where the bot should click to navigate to the next page. So the button is the next one. So let's click here. And that's it. So now let's click on save and close. And here you can see, so basically the output the extraction will be saved on this variable, which is a data table. So now uh, I'll just use here output data table activities. So we can see basically the data table in text format. So first we need to pass here the data table. Then here, basically the text, which will be basically the data table in text format. So we have to declare here a variable. So let's use here control K and create a variable str dt. And now just see uh, this uh, text from the table. Let's just use a message box. So the text. And now just before running the bot, let's here limit the extraction to five pages. So here, Let's select limit extraction to max pages and number of items five. So the extraction doesn't take too long. So now let's run the bot. And now we'll be done the extraction across each page until the page number five. And here we can see basically the extraction. So we can see everything because are like 100 books, so 100 rows. So now let's just close this message box. So the bot hands execution. So now I'll just remove here this message box and I'll put data table. We'll just see easily the content of the data table that has the extraction output. So now 
to take a screenshot let's use the take screenshot action and now we have here some options like choose how should be the output if it's a file image or to the clipboard so let's leave as file and about file name let's leave this default one and by this way the file will be saved on the projects folder and that's it so let's see if it appears here the screenshot to the page web page that it's open so let's just run now the bot so the execution ended and now here on the project panel if we refresh should appear here the screenshot and by the way if it doesn't appear probably is because of the filters so here let's click here and uh, check other so now here we can see that appears a screenshot so let's do a double click so we can see it and so here we can see the screenshot that was taken to the web page so it worked so now uh, to close the browser basically we can enable back here on the close property to close if was open the browser by these activities so this is the option that is selected by default or else we can choose always so even if the browser was not opened by the use application browser we can also force the browser to be closed by it so we can choose one of these options so i'll just choose uh, the always one and now let's just run the bot one more time And so as we can see the execution ended by closing the browser and that's it for this tutorial if you want to learn more about ypath we can find here on the screen a playlist where you can find many tutorials on this platform and also if you like this tutorial please give a thumbs up and now subscribe to the channel and enable notifications bell so you don't miss any tutorial released here on the channel